So hi, hello, this is a very unusual video. <laughs> it's kind of my last ditch try to save my vlog that is my reading vlog for reading my favorite booktubers favorite books of 2020 which did not fully upload onto YouTube and that once again shows me that I need to check if a video has fully uploaded before I hit the publishing button. I don't know why I never do that even though this has happened to me multiple times already. But yeah, basically what I decided to do instead of re-uploading the entire thing again, which for my internet connection is gonna take me like four hours, five hours, and it's quite late already. It's like 10 or 11 o'clock and I need to get up early tomorrow, so I don't wanna do that. I decided to instead just put this little intro in front of the rest of the vlog that didn't upload and upload the rest of the vlog as an extra video. So this is what this is. If you have for some reason clicked on this video first, the beginning of the vlog will be in the description box down below. So go and check it out. Watch that part first. Although if you're just interested in my wrap up of the books, I guess you could just <laughs> watch this video instead of watching one hour 40 or something. But yeah, that's what this is. And I'm just gonna put this video in the description box of the other video. So yeah. Um, that was all I wanted to say really. So now let's click over to the rest of the footage. So it's been a few days since I last updated you, which I believe was on Saturday and it's now Thursday the 18th of February. However, I have by now started all the other books on my TBR, the three books that I had left to read and I just wanted to get a little bit into the books already so that I can already share some thoughts and not just be like, hey, hello, I started this book. You know what I mean? But yeah, the first book is The Only Good Indians, which is by Stephen Graham Jones and uh, I like, came across a problem with this book and that is that I don't read horror. The reason for that is because I'm scared very easily, like very easily. However, I also do most of my reading directly before I go to bed and when it's already dark outside, which I refuse to do with this book because no, I don't need any nightmares of elk women like haunting me when I sleep, not necessary. So I am currently <laughs> only reading this during the day and mostly in the morning which you know I don't have that much time during the day because I also get into like studying time right now so I'm now almost halfway through already anyway and I hope I can even though I only read this in the morning still finish this by Sunday but yeah we'll see also fun story so you know how language is really really weird yeah something happened with this book and that is that basically the only thing I know is that it's about a bunch of Native Americans killing some elk and then an elk woman coming to haunt them like a few years later and for me when I think of an elk I think of the animal that is the moose because in German elk is elch which you know basically same word little bit of a difference but then I got this book and I was like this is not the antlers of an elk or what I thought was an elk of a moose um, but you know maybe it's just because of the design team or whatever and then I googled it and apparently in North America an elk is what I would call a deer like a red deer more specifically um, or Rothirsch in German which literally translates to red stag so yeah that's just something interesting to note and then I also found out that apparently in Europe when you talk about an elk you do mean a moose so yeah my confusion wasn't just like just me apparently a lot of people are confused about that because I don't know, why do Americans have to go and call things differently than everyone else around the world does? Which, by the way, like elk or similar words to elk are used for the animal that Americans call the moose in different languages. So obviously it's the American 
English language that's wrong. I mean, duh. Anyway, <laughs> that was just very interesting to find out. And yeah, I'm about halfway through this and we'll see how fast I can go. Then I am also about 140 pages into 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I just completely butchered this name. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. You know this thing? Sometimes when I talk in English in my videos, I will even butcher German names because I'm so like in talking English that it just pronounce everything English and my hair looks weird. Um, anyway, but yeah, reading this book right now, about 140 pages into it, and I am enjoying it, but I am also supremely confused. And there's two reasons for that. The first of those is that a lot of names, especially of the male characters, are basically the same. Like, either you have two different characters who pretty much have the same name exactly, because it's like father, son, grandson have the same name, or you have two characters that have very similar names and especially very similar looking names. And the thing I have with names in books, I just started doing that with fantasy. I often won't read like exactly letter for letter the name, but I'm just gonna kind of you know, take a mental picture of how the name looks without properly reading it. Which, if you then have names that are very similar to each other and that look the same, just leads to confusions for me, okay? <laughs> I had that also, like, recently, yesterday, I finished The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons, and I had the same problem there. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm confused. But then also the second thing is that I just, because of who I am, because of how I grew up, because, you know, I basically know nothing about South America, I just feel like there's a lot of things I'm missing and that like every single plot point is kind of a metaphor or like has something corresponding within the South American either experience or history to like said plot point and that I'm missing all of that, which you know, I won't say it's frustrating, but it definitely makes me want to, after I finish this book, like, look up some analysis stuff on this book so that I can then be better educated. So, yeah, the last book I am still currently reading or that I started, which I only started today and I'm only about 40 pages into it, is The Midnight... The Midnight... The Midnight Library by Matt Hegg. And yeah, not feeling the writing style too much so far, but as I said, only 40 pages into it, so we'll see how it goes. And yeah, that was it so far. I'll update you either once I'm finished with one of the books or in a few days if I have any specific thoughts. But we're getting into the last updates and we're getting into the time when we're finishing this vlog up, which it's been a journey. So yeah. See you in the next clip. So I just finished The Only Good Indians and I'm not sure what I think about it right now. So I'll leave my thoughts up to when I do my wrap up. But we can now summarize this as well, of course. Although since this is kind of a horror suspense novel, I'm gonna keep it quite short and that is basically that it's about a group of Native Americans who 10 years ago shot a bunch of elk and now 10 years later they're being haunted by something and so yeah that's the basic gist of the story and yeah I in fact at the end wasn't as scared anymore as at the beginning. Like, the beginning was very much scary to me, but the ending... I mean, I still tried not to read it at night, because I never knew what might be, but, you know, I could have read it at night as well. And yeah, so I only have two books left to read. It's Sunday morning, by the way, the 21st. I have The Midnight Library left to read. I have about 50 pages? Yeah, 50 pages left of this, which I'm probably gonna finish tonight. I won't be able to read during the day today because I'm out and about with my mom and we're gonna cook dinner and do amazing stuff. But yeah, 
50 pages which I'll probably read tonight and then I also have three chapters or 60 pages left of 100 years of solitude which I probably won't finish today I might finish one or two chapters still tonight but I have noticed that I can only really read one chapter at a time of this book I mean I can read multiple chapters a day but not you know in one reading block because I have noticed that if I read more than one chapter it's like there's too much in this book and my brain kind of starts drifting so yeah but that's what's left to do so I guess I'll check in with you once I've finished the midnight library so it's now evening and I did after all finish both books let's start with the midnight 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 library it's quite late already once again so my ability to speak English has been reduced to almost nothing quite late it's like 10 o'clock it's not that late but anyway now we can talk what this is about this is about a woman who attempts suicide and because of that she kind of lands in this place in between life and death which is called hiccups why do i always have hiccups which is called the midnight library okay. And in there she gets the chance to try out kind of all the possible lives she could have lived if she had made different decisions. And it's a lot about regrets, it's about taking chances and so on. And yeah, I enjoyed it. But I think like I understand why this is so loved by a lot of people but I think I'm not the right person for this book but I'll talk more about that when I wrap up the entire TBR tomorrow and then I did also already manage to finish 100 years of solitude because I came home earlier than I expected and this is a little bit harder to summarize I mean on the surface it's a generational story it's about this family who found this village somewhere in South America and it's about the different generations of the family and the dramas within the family but also within the village although like only within the village as it concerns the family but this is magical realism so that's really only the surface plot <laughs> but underneath there's like a lot of things that I gotta be honest uh, I felt mostly too stupid to get or not too stupid but too uninformed to get so yeah but I'll talk about that more tomorrow as well and for now I'm just gonna say I absolutely loved the last page like the last page was one of the most beautifully finishing pages of a story that I have ever read it's like it's absolutely gorgeous so yeah that's that and now I'm not gonna go to sleep i'm gonna watch some more netflix or something probably and tomorrow i'm gonna wrap up this tbr i'm gonna tell you my final thoughts on all the books some books i might summarize a bit more than others and for others i'm just gonna say one or two more sentences and yeah then that was it for this tbr it's been a journey and a journey that i thoroughly enjoyed so yeah see you tomorrow so it is time to wrap up this reading project that has been going on for over one and a half months now i think it's longer than one and a half months i'm not sure it's, it's maths it's whatever but yeah it's time for me to share my final thoughts i will try to keep this a little bit short and snappy because I've already edited most of the clips and I already have more than one hour of content so yeah uh, trying to keep this short also I'm gonna try to not repeat myself from like things I already said in some clips while reading and so on and yeah I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on these books in order in which I enjoyed them starting with the one that I enjoyed the least ending with the one I enjoyed the most Although I have to say overall this project was really successful because I ended up having three new five star reads, three potential spots already taken on my end of 2021 favorite books of the year list. I would say that most of the books, if I were to rate 
books this year, which of course I don't, I would give four stars. Also, I don't think I would rate any of the books lower than three stars. And even the books that I didn't enjoy that much, I don't think it's because they're bad books, but they were all just books that weren't for me necessarily that I couldn't connect with. So yeah, let's start. Although this first book I am gonna talk about isn't the one I like the least, but it's a book that's kind of outside of the ranking. And that is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And the reason why I kind of feel like I can't really put this in a solid space within the ranking is because I feel like I'm too stupid, not too stupid, too uninformed to properly judge this book. And the reason for that is that while reading this book, I got the distinct feeling that every single character within this book either corresponds with a historical figure or a type of figure from South American history. And that every single plot point within this book also kind of corresponds with stuff that has to do with South American history, with South American society, with life in South America and so on. And for me, I just don't know enough about South America to properly like get all those connections and get all those things. And so even though I read the story, enjoyed the story and read it from front to back, enjoyed it, I still feel like I didn't properly read it. And so because of that, I'm just gonna say I would recommend you read this book, but I also would recommend you inform yourself about South America either beforehand or while reading it. I'm definitely gonna go and read some essays and some information on this book up. And I'm hoping that maybe once I do that, I wanna reread this and then maybe understand more of it. But yeah, because of that, I just didn't really feel like I could properly judge this book because this, if I had known the full, or if I were able to get the full context of the book, I am sure that this could potentially be the favorite book on this list. So yeah, that's why I wanted to have this outside of the ranking. But also aside from that, I absolutely love the writing style. I found it a little bit confusing sometimes, but I think that was done on purpose because as I said in one of the clips, like the names are all the same or variations of each other. And then there's also sometimes characters that reappear again where you're like, wait, they aren't dead yet? I thought they were dead already. They weren't here for chapters, like what's going on? Which I think is all on purpose. But yeah, I can recommend you pick this book up, but again, just be aware that there's a lot of background info that has to go into this book to properly understand it. But again, the same thing can be said for most classics really, so not that much difference. This is a modern classic after all. Then on the last spot I have And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. The reason for that is that, I mean, I can see why people enjoy it and why people enjoy Agatha Christie, but there were just a lot of elements about this book that made me not really a fan of it. The first is the general racism and misogyny. I mean, there wasn't too much of it, but there was enough that, like, constantly made me feel like kind of, eh, you know? I mean, in classics, you kind of have to deal with that a little bit. I mean, it's not uncommon in classics to come across racism and sexism and so on. That's what I mean. But a lot of times I can not ignore it, but kind of, you know, contextualize it. And via contextualizing, it helps me not being okay with racism in classics, but, you know, kind of seeing it through a different lens. However, in this book, for some reason, I didn't manage to do that at all. I don't know why. And then also, I wasn't the biggest fan of the mystery. I thought it wasn't set up enough, like the solution at the end, but that might also be because I read it too quickly and I didn't pay enough attention to hints. So, might be up to me, might not be up to the book. And then the third thing that really got me was I constantly just went, the way you all act is so fucking stupid, why are you doing this? If I were stranded on an island and 
people from my group start dying and our mutual consensus is that it's one of us who's the one killing the other people the thing I would do is like okay we have to go around in groups of a minimum of three people because you know it's just common sense <laughs> not groups of two not alone groups of three people so yeah just mm, not the biggest fan of this to be honest it was enjoyable enough I'm happy I read it but eh probably gonna be part of an unhaul pretty soon to be honest then next i sadly sadly have good morning midnight by lily brooks dalton the reason why i say sadly is because this of course i took from monica's list and monica is like my favorite person ever so i'm sorry monica I'm, i truly am but yeah i talked about this already a little bit in the vlog clips but this wasn't really about plot in this book which i can be fine with however if a book isn't about plot it either has to be a character exploration for me or it has to have not necessarily beautiful writing but unique writing writing that i can appreciate just for itself and it just didn't have enough of either for me to really enjoy this i felt like the character exploration wasn't in depth enough for me to really hook my claws into but the writing also wasn't anything outstanding. And also I then had the problem that another book, which you'll see more towards the top of this list, Wait by Jeanette Winterson, had a very similar theme to this, which both books had themes of the exploration of loneliness. And Jeanette Winterson just dealt with it in a way that I way preferred compared to this one. So yeah, wasn't for me, but I can see why people love this. Then I have The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. The reason why this is rather low on this list is simply because it's a genre that I don't typically enjoy reading. I mean, I enjoyed my foray into this genre within this book and I really enjoyed, you know, the way the book was built. But overall, it's still not a genre that I will really enjoy. So, you know, it's just not for me. However, what I really enjoyed about this is how at the very beginning of the book, it was very typically horror in a way. I mean, I say typically horror having never read horror books aside from this one. <laughs> but it felt, you know, what I would assume as someone who doesn't know what horror is, what I would assume horror to be. So... I did enjoy that but towards the end it transformed a lot more and it was a lot more about emotions and you know how the characters deal with the situation they're in right now and I really really enjoyed this you know change of not pace but change of focus but yeah so overall I can say I enjoyed this book even though I'm probably never gonna reread this but I'm happy I read this. Then I have The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood, which is the first book in the Serpent Gates series. And this is the lowest ranked high fantasy on this list. So the lowest ranked of the genre that I typically read and enjoy the most. And the reason for that was mostly because while I did find it very interesting overall the story, I also feel like there were a lot of missed opportunities. But I won't go too much into that because I do intend to have a whole review up for this. Because it is, after all, written by a woman. It is adult high fantasy. And as I have said in multiple videos already, I do intend to review every single adult high fantasy written by a woman that I read within 2021. But yeah, just quickly for this one, I felt like there was a lot missed opportunities, especially when it comes to like mostly having non-human races within this world. And also I felt like the romance was a little bit out of nowhere. So I was a fan of the romance at the end, but at the same there wasn't any chemistry that I could detect on the pages. So yeah, that's mostly why I ranked it so low on this list even though I overall still enjoyed it and I want to continue on with the series. Next ranked is The Midnight Library by Matt Hagg. This is a book that is very, very beautifully written and where I can very much see why it's so important to a lot of people. I think I talked about that yesterday at night when I talked about having finished this book, 
But this book is a lot about regrets and not having lived your life like you wanted to live it, having missed opportunities and so on. And so while I could appreciate this for its writing and for the message it sent, and it did make me tear up a little bit at the end, but again, I tear up very easily. For me, ultimately, it didn't resonate within me because I'm a person, I don't do regrets. <laughs> it sounds so weird because regrets is not something you can really control. But I can just say that not getting to TMI, I've had a lot of, I mean, not more or less than the average person in Europe, I would say, but I've had certain hardships in my life, uh, be it, you know, cancer, be it my relationship that's fucked up to my father, be it being a divorcee child and so on. And there were times in my life when I thought about, you know, would I want to have had a different life? Would I want to have... A happier life in a way and ultimately for me it was always even if it was choices that I made or choices that I could never like influence I was always someone no I don't regret a single thing about my life looking back I don't regret a single thing I could wish they had been different but I don't regret those things because those things made me the person I am today every single choice I made made me the person I am today and so because of that, this book, which was all about regrets and getting a second chance and the third and the fourth and living your life, just, you know, didn't resonate with me. And I was only able or only able to interact with this book at a purely intellectual level or however you want to call it, less on an emotional level. Then I have Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. I also really enjoyed this book. It's it was one of the first books I read for this read readathon, not readathon, vlog for this project. And I enjoyed it, but it really, really depressed me. However, it was like a good type of depression in a way, because this book was a character exploration and it was the type of character exploration that I very very much enjoyed but not just character exploration I also feel like it was kind of an exploration of circumstances of this bisexual man this character and yeah I can absolutely highly recommend everyone go pick this up not just because it's you know a black classic but also just generally because I think it's a great book and so I'm very happy I picked this up as well. Then I have Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi, which in a way actually kind of is similar to The Midnight Library, not, not in the exact plot, but it's kind of about people, you know, getting a second chance. However, in this case, they absolutely cannot change anything, obviously, as I said when I summarized this, because when you go back in time, you have the ability to go back in time, but not the ability to change anything in the present. And I really enjoyed that. I connected with this a lot more, just getting the chance to do something to get off of your chest, even if it doesn't change anything, can often lead to, you know, changes in yourself and so you can change things going into the future and i did really really enjoy that it was a very heartwarming story i mean multiple very heartwarming stories because of course you follow multiple characters each of them going back and yeah i don't have that much to say about this just that you know it's just a fun nice pretty story although i'm not the biggest fan of the way a lot of words were translated i mean i don't speak japanese but for those of you who watch anime a lot you know that you have these words that you can often say for brother sister and so on and i feel like something about the cultural significance of those terms is lost if you translate it to big brother, big sister and so on. So yeah, because I think generally, I mean, of course, it depends on culture as well and where you're from, but generally in a lot of Western cultures, we don't directly say, hey, big brother to our big brother and so on. So yeah, that was just a little nitpicky thing, 
but it more has to do with the translation and less with the story itself. Then I have probably my biggest surprise from this reading vlog and that is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I'm such a big fan of this. Also not gonna say too much about this because I am currently already reading the second book and then gonna start with the third book, hopefully still this week, we'll see. And I will then wanna upload a review, a series review of the trilogy. But yeah, I was really surprised generally about how much I enjoyed this or ended up enjoying this. I really like the characters. I like the antagonistic characters as well. They were like the right type of infuriatingly bigoted, I would say. <laughs> and I just love the kind of death and the maiden trope, which, I mean, it's kind of death but also it's, it's the Winter King who has something to do with death, but also not really. Anyway, you'd have to read the book to understand that, but you know, the whole nature, spirit and maiden thing, I am very much a fan of and it was really well done within this one. So yeah, can definitely recommend this. Also, Vazia was just a really fun character. Next, I have The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. This, I am sure, is gonna be a new favorite series of mine. I absolutely love this. I think I talked the most about this one because while I read this one, I didn't notice yet how short I would have to keep my updates <laughs> to keep this vlog like on the manageable side. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a really unique military fantasy. I loved how in-depth we went with the characters. I found the characters so interesting. Both the like more evil characters, not evil, but like antagonistic characters, bad characters, and then the good guys. The only thing I would really criticize is the female characters in this. And that's mostly that for two thirds, of the book we barely had any female characters we in fact only had two and then in the last third we got some more female characters we got some more variety in the female characters but up until that point there were some choices made with some of the female characters that i wouldn't have minded otherwise but because there were only two characters i did not like the choice that was made I hope that makes sense, but yeah, it's all I can say without spoiling you for this. So yeah, female characters, some space for improvement, but overall absolutely really, really enjoyed this series and I cannot wait to get to book two and then book three, which I think comes out in November. Then I have Wait by Jeanette Winterson, which, as I said, has an amazing exploration of loneliness within the story. But mostly what I enjoyed so much about this was just the writing style. The writing is absolutely beautiful. It, after all, made me say that this is going to be a new favorite or made me predict this is going to be a five star after just one page of reading, pretty much. And the only thing I mean kind of negative which kind of put me off in between a little bit is sometimes there's some passages within the writing that can be quite crude which you know I don't tend to always be the biggest fan of but also it's just still such a beautiful book so definitely go and read this also because it's only I think 150 pages or something like that yeah, 150 pages. You should definitely read this. Then my second five star and also the number two spot on this list goes to White Chrysanthemum by Marilyn Brecht, which I loved so much. It was once again a beautiful character exploration, which by the way, I can take or leave character driven books. I don't really care. I'm not really a character driven or plot driven reader. My battery was dead. I'm sorry. But a proper character exploration is just so good, love it so much, and this definitely had that. Also, dealing with grief. I love books that deal with grief, and this one does that really well as well. That was... Anyway, let's continue on. I only have one negative thing, and it's just probably negative only for me because I'm a very special person and you will understand what I mean if you have watched my mid-month check-in and if you have watched my review of Farewell Sidonia and that is that sad books written by Austrian and also a lot of times German authors 
they are depressing, they are bleak, there isn't a single ray of sunshine. However, within the English language, depressing, devastating books, which this one certainly is, often have a ray of sunshine. They end on a kind of hopeful note, which this one did as well, and which made me go a little bit of, uh-huh, mm-hmm, sure, sure. <laughs> Which, of course, I enjoy it. I don't want bad things or more bad things to happen to the characters in here. But, you know, the kind of cynic in me is a little bit... Yeah, sure, let's do that. Let's, let's give the readers some hope. Which, I guess, is just a very Austrian sentiment. But, yeah, definitely love this book. And then my favorite book, which I won't talk about anymore because I already do have a full review of this, which will be left linked down below and up there, is The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. And I can't really say anything more than this book ripped out my heart, tore it into pieces, stepped all over it, uh, threw it into a dry freezer and then, I don't know, let it explode on the floor, threw it on the floor again, whatever. I don't know. You know, it did all the bad, hurtful things to my heart and I love it. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about this book and if you want to know my thoughts, link will be down below as I said. But yeah, that was it for this reading vlog, this reading project and I very much enjoyed it. If you've read any of the books, as always, tell me your thoughts down below, what you thought of them. I cannot talk today. What's wrong with me? Anyway, tell me your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. All the links to my social media are in the description down below, so go and check those out. All the links to my book club of Queens, Witches and Valkyries, where I read one adult high fantasy book written by a woman per month, will also be linked down below, so go and check those out as well. And I hope I'll see you soon. Bye!